guys know that I have given you the cage by cage tour of the Reptarium a couple different times. Well, today we are actually going to give you a tour of the entire compound. BHB, the new gecko room, the entire thing. Obviously, there's a lot going on here at the Reptarium. And I'm going to show you a few things that I don't show as often as I should, to be honest with you. You guys know that the normal animals like ivy and all that stuff I show all the time. Animals like Irwin here are absolutely incredible. Of course, a blue tongue skink, a northern blue tongue skink, and that beautiful blue tongue. Look at that blue tongue. You are so cute, Irwin. And how about Cherry Pop, the Aki monitor? This guy is absolutely incredible. And we've been working with it quite a bit. Where are you at, little buddy? There he is. He's hiding underneath there. Come on, Cherry Pop. Look at how absolutely incredible it is. And remember, stick around till the end of this video because you're going to be seeing all kinds of animals that we don't show that often from BHB to every single aspect of the place. We have a lot going on here. And the Reptarium is awesome to show up. I can't wait to show you every single thing that we've got going on here. This time of year is even more exciting because, of course, brumation is over. So we have all the colubrids up and everything is going on. Of course, we've got baby Kush over here. Take a look at this beautiful animal right here. I'm going to go and just say hi to him real quick. Look at that animal right there. And he's coming over. Just say hi to me. Oh, come on, baby Kush. You're okay. Relax, bud. You're all right. There you go. There you go, baby Kush. He definitely still needs a little bit of work, but he's calming down. I mean, I could definitely not have pet him before. Can't wait till he becomes puppy dog tame. Of course, the Gira Rufo, they always are amazing. These things are so popular, especially for kids. I mean, of course, we've got Drogo. We've showed you Drogo before. What's up, Drogo? Hi, buddy. Where's he? Oh, my gosh. He's right over here. Let's go take a look, guys. Hey, buddy boy. What are you doing, silly monkey? He's up and about today. So he cruises around quite a bit, but this time of the day, he's usually not up. I have a feeling we caught him in the very early morning. And then here within the next hour, so he's going to be napping for most of the afternoon. You are amazing, Drogo. Thank you for being out. What a cool animal, right? Now go back to sleep. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look at Albertino here. Look at this little monkey. This snake is absolutely stunning. Beautiful snake. Beautiful temperament. Look at the head on that animal. Look at that head. That is absolutely ridiculous. We've got salt and pepper here. Look at this. Look at this. We actually have pickles. Pickles is actually just coming out of shed. You might remember we built a little nest box over here that's already down here, so it's going to be really cool. She sheds out about 20 to 21 days after that shed, she's gonna have eggs. What do you say we head over to BHB? You guys may recognize this. This is the BHB original OG room that I used to do all my vlogging in when we first started vlogging. And these are where our raise up colubrids are. The future colubrids that we're breeding. This is actually a candy cane to Sarah corn snake. I mean, look at that. The candy cane is an albino corn snake, but it has like more white and more red on it. Just absolutely wonderful. A couple hundred snakes that are actually coming up here in this particular room because there's so many amazing animals. This is actually what they call a Dion's rat snake, but this is a melanistic Dion's rat snake, which is pretty cool. It's a recessive mutation that just has that melanism or black in it that's really just quite amazing. Take a look at how big these are getting. Of course, these are the divergent, just like a mangrove snake, but a subspecies of, woo, divergent. Rear fang venomous, pretty mild and stuff like that, but look at all the blues that are starting to come through in this animal. As it gets older, just more and more impressive. Now take a look at these. These are the Aurora house snakes. Now I love house snakes. I think they're absolutely amazing. And the auroras with the green, with this like orangey stripe down them, kind of cool eyes on them. What amazing snakes. I can't wait till they get up to size to breed next year. And of course, we ended up getting those file snakes. We still have all of them and they are doing absolutely wonderful. These are actually a cape file snake from South Africa. And I think they are some of the coolest snakes that I'm working with. There's a good chance I'm going to get bit by this one because it bites everything all the time. It is just always so food aggressive. It's all right. We don't, we don't have to bite me. We don't have to bite me. But this is what they would call a scissors crossing black and white striped California king snake. And oh, oh God, I got the heebie jeebies. I tell you what, every time you know you're going to get bit, you get the little goosebumps and stuff like that, but that's okay. This is a pied muserana rat snake. I mean, look at that. Woo -hoo. I tell you, what, that is one impressive snake. And these guys can get eight, nine foot, big, thick body. Cannot wait to produce the pied museranas. And when you breed pie to pie, you actually get what they call super pies. And that's this one right here. Look at that animal. Definitely excited. It ain't going to happen this year, but next year we'll definitely get some pied muserana rat snakes and hopefully some super pies. And then we have, of course, a Sabu python. This is the only Sabu python that we kept and raised last year because I wanted to raise all the ones we produced, but Lori sold them on me. So I ended up salvaging one little female that's coming up. It won't be ready this year, maybe next year. And I'm in love with these snakes. These are actually albino wolf snakes. And this is the only pair of albino wolf snakes that are in the country. They bring bread over in Europe, but no one else had them in the country. So I was able to scoop up the only pair of Available last year. And if any more become available this year, I'm going to scoop them up too because I think they're some of the coolest albino snakes out there. This is definitely a really cool snake too. And to be honest with you, this will probably go to the reptarium. This probably isn't a breeding project. This is actually what they call a cave dwelling.
Wing Snake. It's actually a Beauty Snake, but this is a Ridley Eye, and they get a little bit feisty at times, but isn't it cool how its head's kind of got blue on it, its body is this yellow color, and then its tail gets that blue look to it again. Absolutely wonderful snakes. One of the nicest albino snakes out there, of course, is the albino Applegate Gopher Snakes. I mean, just really beautiful snakes. This is about half grown now, so next year it'll be big enough to breed. They'll get like five foot right in that range. Pretty thick body, but just look at the color on that and the pattern on it. Absolutely wonderful. And another beauty snake here is actually an albino calico beauty snake. And this is much like that Ridley eye. It's got a little bit of an attitude. There's no doubt about that. Hey, calm down there, buddy. It's all right. But wow, this is a pretty snake. And beauty snakes can get large. The freeze eye, which we actually have, can get literally eight or nine foot. This particular one, which is the Chinese version, will literally max out at about six foot. It's about four foot now. So think about it. This is going to get two foot larger. Really, really cool snake. Ooh, raising up a couple of these guys here. Ooh, of course, this is a false water cobra. Whoa. These guys, again, have little mildly venomous rear fang snake, but really don't bite. They bluff in a tremendous amount, but really don't bite. But this is incredible. And of course, they have hypos of these and they have the lavenders of these too. So I've got to work more with these because they are lovely, lovely snakes. Again, a nice big snake too. Easily getting seven foot and pretty wide too. So it's a cool snake. This one will be breeding next year. Then take a look at this little monkey right here. It's always so hard to pick this up on camera, but this is actually a salmon or what they would call a coral snow corn snake, which is a pink corn snake. Absolutely incredible. It's just cool to see pink snakes. I mean, and hey, Easter's coming up. So this is the perfect snake for Easter, right? So again, this entire section is just raise up colubrids that'll be breeding here. A couple pythons mixed in, stuff like that, but nevertheless, tons of snakes here. And again, I vlogged this room more than ever when I first started the vlog. So it's good to be back in this room showing you guys some cool animals. And then of course, this is the colubrid room that we just brought out of brumation just about a week ago and things are kind of moving along pretty well. We have so many amazing snakes down here and it's so exciting. You know, I've been a colubrid breeder basically my entire life since I started breeding snakes really with colubrids. This is a coral ghost corn snake. It's just one of those animals that's polygenically bred for high pink and just absolutely wonderful. And there's a ton of snakes in here and a bunch of animals that are actually going to get moved over here as well, which makes it really exciting too. This is actually a granite Max Max, our San Luis Potosi king snake. But the graniting is the part that is cool because normally they have bands and bars on them. Just a totally interesting animal. Everybody loves the Mexican black king snakes, right? And we always have a big group of these guys put up because no matter how many Mexican black kings we produce, they are always sold so quick because they're just so amazing. And then of course, there's a ton of corn snakes too. I mean, take a look at this here. This is actually a tessera that is het for scaleless. And we produced a bunch of scaleless tesseras last year. Now the tessera is actually a pattern and color mutation, mainly a pattern mutation overall. And it's actually like an incomplete dominant, which is really rare when it comes to colubrids to have incomplete dominant stuff. So we breed a tessera to a normal, about half the babies come out with this racing, crazy striping, stuff like that. Oh, and cow kings. I mean, come on. We have so many cow kings. It's not even funny. Of course, this is the mosaic cow king. This is the version that we would call a higher track mosaic cow king because it has kind of a track all the way down its back. It's going to be really exciting to get all these colubrids kind of getting going breeding. And it happens pretty quick, to be totally honest with you. I mean, within a matter of no time, these animals have eggs and we're going to be producing tons of babies. These are really quite amazing animals. These are actually tricolored hognose snakes. I mean, take a look at that right there. These are a South American hognose high production. They'll literally have four, five, six clutches per year. So you have to really keep that food going to them in order to keep them healthy. This is actually a Blair's face or what they would call a gray banded king snake. I mean, whoo, I tell you what, that is amazing. This is a new red line, which is a kind of a new line of albino corn snake that is actually het for scaleless. And when the scaleless red line stuff comes out, it is whoo doggy. I tell you what, lots of really cool stuff coming up this year. Look at this. Take a look at that right there. This is actually a rhino rat snake. Whoo, it's a little feisty monkey. There's no doubt about that. But hopefully with any luck, we'll produce rhino rat snakes for the first time in the last couple years because we bred them for several years and then we kind of stopped breeding them and now we're back. And that's kind of how everything works, right? You guys know I do a lot of scaleless corn snake stuff. And whoo, this little monkey has got a little bit of fire under him. There's no doubt about it. But look at the scaleless corn snake here. What is the matter, you little silly? This is what they would call a Nuevo Leonis king snake or a variable king snake, sometimes called a therai as well because they're actually a Lampropeltis mexicana therai. It makes it kind of easier to say therai as opposed to all this other stuff. Of course, we have scaleless blood red corn snakes here, which are what they call diffuse corn snakes. And then we have extreme Honduran tangerine milk snakes. Oh my goodness gracious. I tell you, it's so many cool animals in this Kluber room. And this is where I'll be spending a lot of my summer. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to 
gonna be in here working with all kinds of different really cool animals. This is a licorice stick black rat snake. I mean, look at how cool these guys are with that racing stripe down its back. We'll have thousands of baby snakes out of this room this year and it's gonna be really exciting. So get used to seeing me in this room because I'm gonna be in here a lot. Back to the Reptarium and look at little Brillo. Isn't that the cutest thing in the world? He makes his little nest every single day. He loves to bury and move the dirt around. They love to dig, right? Builds this little mound right here and he sleeps. Sometimes he sleeps on his back. It's the cutest thing in the world. But I'm gonna let him go ahead and sleep because hey, listen, I don't want him to have to wake up just for no reason, right? Hey, we all need our beauty sleep and he definitely needs a black headed python share. Take a look at these monkeys right here. And this is the girl right here and she is definitely starting to look a little swollen. Now, I'm not sure if we're gonna have babies or not, or I should say eggs, but it certainly would be amazing. And someone asked me recently if you could tame out black headed pythons. The truth is, is they're not aggressive animals. What it is is they're heavily feeding animals. So they wanna eat. So when they get touched, they're like, is it food? I'm gonna eat it. Once you actually get them out and they realize you're not food, they're actually really, really good animals. Then of course there's Tabasco. Hey buddy, it's okay. Come on over. Of course he's a little cage defensive now. Of course he's not a very good boy. He's been a naughty boy this last month or so. But as soon as you open the cage and start to pat him, look at him, he's closing his eyes. He's pushing his way towards me. I mean, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Look at that prehistoric animal. That big old dewlap right there. And like I said, he loves his pets and he loves people. He's just is getting a little bit cage defensive now. So when you shut the cage, then he's like, this is my cage, leave me alone. But he is absolutely wonderful animal. Such an absolute ripper. And speaking of iguanas, I mean, come on. The rhino iguanas are amazing. We can walk right in here with these guys. I can pet them. They're looking out at the snowy weather here. Hopefully the last snowy day of the year because I'm telling you what, we are all over winter, right? Just please, Dad, make it get summertime again. They love it when the sun comes through here in the summer days and they bask right in the sun. I love this enclosure and I love these iguanas because they are absolutely incredible. The turtle pond, what more can be said? Look at the albino red-eared slider over here, normal red-eared sliders over here, and they're just so cool. I love this turtle pond. And again, I love the fact that kids can come over here and they just get such a kick out of them. Work out exactly like I was hoping it was gonna be for kids. So, I mean, just look, look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness. All said and done, have about 15 red-eared slider albinos and about 10 actual red-eared sliders in here. They're all getting pretty big and they're incredible. So again, I love the turtle pond and the kids love it too. Of course, Nova, hey Nova, what's going on, buddy? Nova is amazing. Of course, we got Ben and Jerry. We cannot go without showing Ben and Jerry, the absolutely beautiful two-headed snake. Again, one of those animals that always creates a tremendous amount of conversation, right? And when I can start people talking about reptiles, I can get them convinced that reptiles are absolutely cool. What do you say we head down to the New Caledonia Gecko Room? And of course, we have our new gecko room. We're gonna do a complete tour of this room when it's finished, which is pretty close, only five or six cages left, and then this entire room's done. And we'll go cage by cage in here. But I wanna give you the kind of overview, but I wanna give you the overview. We have, of course, some amazing gargoyle geckos. Take a look at these guys here. This is actually the Tiki's Gecko line, the Dracula line that we have. And these were produced by us a year and a half ago. And they're just at that size where they should be able to start breeding. That's the boy right there. And then the girl is right here and she looks great. These are gonna produce some incredible red babies this year. We have so many gargoyles coming up and breeding this year. It's gonna be really exciting. And it's really neat to see so many of them here in the new room, right? It's just, just so cool. And of course we have a lot of lychee geckos in here too. This is actually one of our older lychee geckos that we've had for about five years now, something like that. But we just are starting to try to breed these for the very first time this year. So a bunch of these enclosures actually have lychee geckos. Of course, the largest gecko species on the planet. And I love them to death. There you go, buddy, go ahead. And they look so good. I tell you, it's amazing to have in a room like this as opposed to say keeping them in tubs and stuff like that. Not that there's anything wrong with like big tubs with foliage and stuff like that, but being in these enclosures is gonna be amazing. Now, the only kind of drawback is, is that finding eggs is gonna be a little bit difficult. And these are actually a pair of crested geckos. Take a look at these right here. Absolutely wonderful. Definitely gonna be a challenge with these naturalistic enclosures to find the eggs. I have a feeling that a lot of times what's gonna end up happening is that we're gonna just find babies. You know, they're gonna bury their eggs. We're probably not gonna realize there's eggs. One day we're gonna come and there's gonna be babies, which is pretty cool, right? We actually have cave geckos in this enclosure here. Day gecko, right, you can see them right up there. Look at that day gecko up here. Then we actually have a little leaf tail gecko in here somewhere. Here it is right here. These are actually flat tail leaf gal tail geckos and they're very interesting. I mean, look at that gecko right there. Ho oh, oh, ho, oh, you open your mouth on me, buddy. We'll go ahead and get it back in here and keep it happy. There's no doubt about that. And then again, lots of other geckos. So let me tell you, show you this over here. This is actually a lily white, which is really cool. This is a crested gecko, but it's an incomplete dominant crested gecko and it's called a lily white. And it's got that beautiful white pattern on it. As it gets older, it actually fades even more and more. And this is an incomplete dominant as well. So when you breed this to a normal crested gecko, 
about half the babies come out lily white. So this gecko room is coming together. Not quite done yet. We're still under construction here, but probably within the next week or two, it'll be completely done. Let me know in the comments if you guys want us to do a cage by cage tour of this room, just this room for a vlog. I'll be happy to do it. Oh, while you're down there, smash that like button for me. Look at Night Fury right now. Night Fury shed out just like two or three days ago. And oh my goodness, look at the sheen and iridescence on that animal. <laughs> my goodness gracious. It just never gets old looking at that animal. It's just amazing. And he's a fun snake too. He's always kind of on the mood. Three ticks are just kind of that way, right? They can kind of be hyper, which is really cool. You know, to be honest with you, he's getting so much better. This is Beetlejuice, the Bell's Face Lace Monitor. And when I open up the enclosure, he's still not like super, super docile, but I can still come in and just kind of pat him just a little bit. And he just slowly walks away, right? Remember when he used to, as soon as you open up the enclosure, he'd run away. So he's getting better and better. And I absolutely love that animal. It'll eventually get like six foot long. That's going to be pretty impressive. And talking about impressive, look at this snake right here. Remember, we just moved this one over here over the last few weeks and it's doing so well. It's in shed and still looks incredible. This, of course, is Neo, short for Neapolitan. Golden Child Motley Pied Reticulated Python. Ooh, doggy. I tell you what, that is an amazing animal and such a great addition to our ambassadors here. People come in and are blown away. And this is just a little thing. When this is 10, 12, 14 foot, it's going to be amazing. And it looks so good in here. And I've mentioned this is a temporary thing where it's going to be staying in here because within a matter of a couple months, it's going to have to go into an enclosure maybe this size. Thinking of this size enclosure, this is Snaz, of course. This is our only normal Burmese python here. Snazzy, it's okay, bud. He's like, you're going to feed me, Dad? But he is an absolutely beautiful animal. Look at that snake. My first snake ever was a normal Burmese python, just like my guy Snaz here. And there's so much to see. Again, we're not going to go every single enclosure this time because we're showing you the entire compound, right? But of course, we have Joker, the scaleless Texas rat snake. Again, another conversation starter, much like the two-headed snake, Ben and Jerry. It's just so interesting feeling. If this had philo vision, you guys would be like, oh my gosh, that is one weird snake. What do you guys say we head over to the dungeon? And then of course we have the dungeon and my guy RJ here, my beautiful animal. I cannot wait to get him over to the reptarium in a giant enclosure for him. He's got to go back in his pond. Here you go, buddy. There you go. So it, RJ is amazing. Of course, you guys know the dungeon well. We've been down here so many times. And we actually have some new ambassador animals here that are eventually go over to the Reptarium as ambassador animals over there in the expansion. I want to show you a new one. This is one of our new tegus. This now is an albino blue ice tegu. Absolutely beautiful. It's a female. She is dog tank. And she's going to be such a good animal ambassador to get over to the Reptarium because she loves people and she is just absolutely so mellow. Then, of course, you guys remember when we got these monkeys here. These are the Sudan plated lizards. Absolutely incredible. They're down here just number one for quarantine and number two to kind of get kind of habituated to our place. They'll definitely be over at the Reptarium maybe as soon as this week to be honest with you. We already have an idea where they're going to go. We just have to move some things around because these guys are going to be such a hit at the Reptarium. I mean just look at how docile and cool they are. They are such cool, cool animals. And there's so many other cool animals down here as well. This is actually that motley het call albino that actually was bred to the hypo head albino that I think we're going to have babies from. So this animal here here, even at this size, is big enough to breed. Then there's Penelope. This is a future animal ambassador here at the Reptarium for sure. It's a hypo Burmese python. I just love the hypo berms, and as they get older, they get more and more interesting with more in yellows and green tones. So Penelope is doing great. Super tame animal. As she gets bigger, she's going to be a great animal to take to birthday parties, school events, tours, and stuff like that. I love this animal to death. Then, of course, we have the diamond pythons that we got a while back that will have a really great arboreal enclosure here at the expansion of the reptiles. It's been a dream snake of mine my entire life. So to have a pair of them now and potentially even breed them down the road would be absolutely amazing. And talk about a dream animal. You guys remember when I got these guys, the Sanzinia or Madagascan tree boas. And look at how big they're getting now. Again, really cool arboreal cage in the Reptarium expansion. These guys are going to look amazing. Look at how big these Suriname red tail boas are getting. And look at the red on this tail. Unbelievable. Again, the true red tails are the BCCs. They're just amazing. They can get really big. They're beautiful. The patterns are so crisp and so amazing. They've got these widow peaks here down their saddles. As this thing gets bigger, it gets prettier and prettier. Another boa that you really rarely see these days are actually hog island boas. Unlike the red tail boas that have really crisp patterning, it's almost like the pattern fades into the background and they have lots of freckles. And the tail, instead of having that really red, almost is a unitone color. Just really cool. Hog 
ones were actually pretty available maybe 15, 20 years ago. Now you hardly ever see them. So the fact that we have some is pretty awesome. Then of course we have our Brazilian rainbow boas down here. And this is our breeding group now that are starting to breed. This is a female that is starting to look like she's got some swelling going on. Typically you have babies about June, July with these guys. So hopefully within the next month or two, we'll get some ovulations. And then we have a bunch of Colombian rainbow boas as well. This is actually a leucistic Colombian rainbow boa. Unbelievable. I mean, just look how ivory and beautiful it is. We have T positive, T negative albinos as well. A whole bunch of stuff. So this aisle here has just a bunch of really cool boas and pythons in it, as well as you know RJ, my buddy, for sure. We talked about Night Fury and the iridescence. This is Bugatti and look at Bugatti. I mean, oh my gosh, that is one incredible snake. Of course, a Bolin's python. Wow, I tell you what, I never get sick of seeing that Bolin's python. He is an absolute ripper. And I tell you what, people come in and just love it. And really, we do take Bugatti out. You know, not as often as maybe some of the other animals because we want to overstreff it. But when you come and actually see a snake like that, that's pretty cool. And talk about a cool snake. Look at this one. This is one that's actually becoming more and more popular here. I'm actually starting to get people come in and say that their favorite snake is, of course, this snake here, which is a Molendorfi or a hundred flower rat snake. This animal is from China and who I tell you, it's just amazing because it has that red head, then he turns to green and then his tail over here turns red again too. Just really cool. And I love the fact that this is becoming one of our kind of more popular animals to be honest with you because normally you don't see that, right? You're like, usually it's a ball python or a big python or something like that. But of course we have Lucky the Amazon tree bow and although it can be a little bit cantankerous at times, I still love it. You know, not every time you take it out, it bites you. You know, sometimes it'll just hang out with you. It's only when it kind of gets to that point where it's like, all right, I'm ready to go back. You have to put him back. But you can see, you can definitely interact with Lucky and it not strike at you just like what happened right there. Just a cool animal, right? Everywhere I look, there's cool animals and I love being here and I love being part of BHP and everything. But look it up there, way up on that rock right there, stuffed in the corner. It's crazy to think that a monitor lizard is like that. The interesting thing is the basking spot is on the other side of the enclosure. And that's the important thing when you're keeping reptiles, right? Is to give them the option right? If he wants to be hot, he can come over and bask right underneath that, that light right there. But if he wants to get on the cool side of the cage, that's fine too. And giving them that kind of thermodynamic range where they can decide what to do, that's super important. Look how cute. Look this. Hi, buddy. <laughs> it's like, cool. Every day I come in, I always go. I'm not trying to encourage people to tap on glass when you're at the zoo. But I just kind of say, good morning, Toothless. And he always pops up like, what's up, Dad? Of course, we have our two-headed turtle chopsticks right over here. And then Voldemort is up on the rock over here. What a cool animal, right? I mean, again, I love showing you guys the entire place. And it's cool that this time we've had the opportunity to show you BHB and all the other stuff that's going on. Because, of course, we have a lot going on here at the Reptarium. But there's so much more going on, right? And this, of course, is Karma 2.0, the nosy bee panther chameleon. Look at how beautiful that animal is. I mean, just absolutely a ripper. And it's so cool that every day we get to show people animals and show them off. It's That's what makes it even more exciting. You know, BHB is great and I love it to death. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tour of BHB. The fact is, is that, you know, no one gets to see those animals. These animals get to see get seen all the time. And of course, we did an entire video about all the ball pythons down this aisle. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to put a card up top here and you can actually go watch us. This is actually an Enchi Cine pumpkin. And of course, I think it was there's 623 ball pythons in this row here. So there is just so many ball pythons, but we love them all. This is actually a fire banana pinstripe. Beautiful animals and enclosure after enclosure of these guys. You just open up and you're just like, oh my goodness. I had such a fun time doing that video just because I had an opportunity to look at so many ball pythons that it was incredible. I mean, look at this piebald ball python. By the way, it's got a little smiley emoji smiling back at you to say smash that like button for me if you don't mind. Also do me a favor while you're down there, hit me up with a comment. This is a super pastel, black pastel, lesser cypress. Woo, doggy. That is absolutely incredible. And the list just goes on and on. More hides over here. We've got puma ball pythons over here, which is actually a spark and a yellow belly. Absolutely gorgeous animals. I mean, pastel Leo's head clown. And look at that. It almost looks like a clown ball python. That is just absolutely ridiculous ridiculous the way it's looking. The only reason I wouldn't think it's a clown is that it has a normal head pattern on it. Other than that, it's incredible. But 620 something snakes down these aisles, it's definitely amazing. I love spending time in this aisle. And one day, all of these animals are gonna find forever homes with you guys. Of course, we have Gemma, the big reticulated python here that we've had that is absolutely tame as could be. Love this girl to death. I mean, just look at how great she is. This is a ghost reticulated python. And just look at the size of that thing's head right there. Woo -hoo! I tell you what, that thing is amazing. Amazing. So again, it's awesome to kind of show you guys all the amazing things. Of course, we got Lucy here, my 20 foot plus snake. She's amazing. We had her out the other 
day. She is so much fun. And then of course our tortoise is Matilda's just over here chilling out. We got Franklin over here. Steve is over there. Big Mama's in the corner over there. And that is the tour of the entire compound. BHB, the dungeon, everything that's going on, the new Caledonia room, the Reptarium, everything. If you enjoyed it, let me know down in the comment what was your favorite animal. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.